I really thought that it was going to be my YouTube account that would get suspended first. I didn't think it was going to be my Vimeo account. The reason for this video is I want to talk to everyone out there. I want you guys to know what happened with my Vimeo account, why it got suspended. I want you to know what happened to get it back up, all the repercussions of that. And more importantly, we need to have a serious conversation about how these Silicon Valley tech companies are fucking out of control with their censorious bullshit. And I kind of have an interesting perspective on this, I think, because I'm both a content creator that creates edgy content. And as some of you might know, I make most of my money as a tech entrepreneur. So I actually run tech companies that are software as a service companies like, like Vimeo, like YouTube, uh, Twitter, websites like this. Okay, so first let me tell you what happened. I'm sitting there uploading a new video to my Vimeo account and all of a sudden the uploader glitches out and I get presented with a login page. Eh, shit software, okay, whatever, no big deal. I log back into my Vimeo account and instead of having access to my account, I've got a screen that says, your account has been suspended for breaking our terms of service without being specific as to what I actually did, just your, your account suspended. Now, here's what's really interesting if, if you don't know this about Vimeo. So with YouTube, you just kind of have a free account. So you're not paying them anything. So if they fuck with you, they fuck with you. And you know, it's kind of a different thing. But my Vimeo account was a paid Vimeo account. So I paid them a monthly fee to host video for me. So when they all of a sudden say, your account's been suspended and they don't tell me why, <laughs> And they don't mention on this screen like, hey, we're refunding you for the partial month where we billed you and now we don't intend to give you service. They just figured like, no, fuck you. We're going to turn off your account and keep your money. <laughs> no, 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 you're not. So I found the button on the screen to complain, to bitch. And uh, what was interesting about their uh, screen, uh, the first two things they ask you is they ask you, do, do you use a VPN? They're trying to get you to admit that you're hacking their system. And then they ask you uh, if, if you share your login information with anyone else. Like, uh, no, no. And their, their boxes are kind of a fill in the blank. They don't really let you tell, you what's, tell them what's going on. So down at the bottom where there's a little bit of space to type some stuff in, I get some stuff in to this, this appeal to have my account unsuspended. And I say three things. I say, number one, already told my lawyer about this. Number two, you will tell me exactly which video at which minute mark breaks which of your terms of service that you are basing the suspension off of. In other words, I want to know exactly why you're suspending the account. And my lawyer's already involved, so make sure you make it good. And then the last thing was, you reinstate this account or I'm charging back the money on the credit card where I paid you guys for service that now you're telling me you don't want to give the service and you're not even saying why. So that's, that's what I got on my little appeal form and uh, sent that in. To my amazement, uh, I, I don't know if I won the lottery in their service, uh, customer service department or what, um, but within like 45 minutes, maybe an hour or so, I want to say, uh, I got a response back from them. And the response was interesting. The response is this, I'm going to tell you in advance, it's a, this Orwellian thing that you've been hearing about that's kind of hard to believe, but I'm gonna tell you it actually happened to me and I'm gonna tell you that this shit's real. Okay, so their email back to me, in the middle of that message, their explanation was, it looks like our automated filters flagged your account by mistake, sorry about that. So 
this is what's happening in Silicon Valley land with these insane, power-hungry leftists that think they're going to censor everyone. They put up these bullshit and weird terms of service where they claim to be a public forum where anyone can post and they claim that they don't censor anyone and that's why they have immunity against lawsuits to be sued because they're, they're just a platform, they're not a publisher. Oh, but if you say something we don't like, then we're going to terminate your account for breaking our terms of service. Then it's gotten a little worse past that. Now what they're doing is anyone that they just don't like if they disagree with your politics, as many people do with mine, they just have their automated system automatically make mistakes on those accounts to delete them. And what they're banking on is they're banking on when they delete your account, you're either not going to be able to find the button to appeal or you're not going to have the balls to appeal or you're not going to instantly jump on them in a legal fashion as I did. So what they're hoping is that they can kind of clean house on their platform by getting rid of the people they don't like and the messages that they don't agree with by making mistakes and deleting the accounts and hoping that people don't, don't reinstate their account. Now, in YouTube land, this makes a hell of a lot of sense because these accounts aren't paid for. So they can prune you know, free accounts and they're not really losing revenue. Their revenue is on the advertising side, right? But with Vimeo, this is kind of interesting to me because Vimeo is a paid model. So it would seem to me that if I ran Vimeo, I would sit there and say like, well, wait, I don't want an automated system that is taking out monthly income. The only explanation I can come up with there, like as we call this, you know, Trump derangement syndrome on the internet, is these people are so far fucking left out in La La Land that they will take the hit monetarily to try to purify their platform. It's, it's insane. So anyways, this is, this is part of the thing that Silicon Valley is doing. This is very real. If they don't like your politics, they shadow ban you, they, they make mistakes of suspending your account, they make you jump through hoops to get it back in. This is what's happening. Okay, so now that we've defined this, and I've told you like, yes, this is real, this happens to my friends, this happens to me, there's all kinds of videos on YouTube and Vimeo and BitChute about this type of sensor stuff happening, which by the way, with, with BitChute, so you understand, the videos that are on BitChute are not about BitChute censoring. BitChute is actually pretty fucking awesome. Uh, I have a channel there too. Um, but the, the videos are on BitChute because uh, YouTube can't censor videos about YouTube on BitChute. <laughs> I just, I, I really hope, man, the guys that run BitChute stay real. Like, don't fucking sell out, please. So here's the perspective that I have, and this is kind of advice for people on the internet. If you're somebody that enjoys different content that's not mainstream, like you're just someone that consumes my content and you like what I say, support me, share me, because these platforms are trying to censor me. So share what I'm doing, get the word out because they're not going to. And I'm not just saying this for me, if there are other content creators, if there are people out there that you appreciate what they are doing, you like that they speak their minds, you have to support them. And the more you support them publicly, not only do you get more traffic, which helps them out, and then they, you know, like me, I can sell t-shirts and consulting and books and things like that, but you're also showing Silicon Valley, fuck you, we want this content. Because in the end, it's, it's the subscribers that are suffering. It's you guys that don't get the content. Like all of a sudden you're being told what the possible opinions are and, and you, you don't even, as an adult, you don't even get to hear the opinions that they don't agree with. Like that's, that's bullshit. Okay, so as, as, a, as a consumer, that's, that's the thing to do. Share the edgy content. And by the way, I should say something about the, the type of content too. I'm not just saying that you should support people that you agree with. That's, that's the whole point of this censorious thing, right? I'm saying stand up for somebody like Alex Jones. I don't agree with most of what he says. I think he's a clown. Now he's an interesting clown to watch and he occasionally makes a really good point, 
But the whole idea is it's fucking America and he gets to speak whatever he wants as long as he's not inciting violence. You want to make an argument against somebody, you don't silence them. You make an argument. So if, if somebody out there doesn't like what I have to say about politics or women or entrepreneurship, create a fucking account, post your video, give me logical arguments and how I'm wrong. You don't like the books I've written? Write your own fucking book making your own fucking arguments. Don't decide that you want to burn mine because people can't handle those dangerous ideas. Okay, so moving on to the content creators. As content creators, there's some stuff that we have to understand. We have to understand as content creators, we make the fucking goddamn content. YouTube doesn't make the content. And when they try making the content, they spend millions of dollars to get nothing. They lose shit tons of money when they try grabbing celebrities from the movies and making YouTube videos. YouTube videos were never about taking Will Smith and watching Will Smith make ice cream. Nobody gives a shit. That's not what fucking YouTube was for. YouTube were, was originally, and this is how it was built, for the eccentric, loudmouth motherfuckers like me that people occasionally like to listen to and give some opinions that are things they haven't heard before, okay? So the magic is the content creators. So much so, and I really want you to understand this, these video platforms are becoming a commodity. You can get a free account on YouTube. I think the cheapest Vimeo account is a few dollars a month. BitChute you can post to for free. There's Daily Motion. Like, there's all kinds of places you can host your video. And it's very easy to do. So as a content creator, don't start cutting off your own dick to, to don't censor me, I'll say the right thing, I'll behave. No, it's counterproductive. The whole idea is that we say whatever the fuck we want because it's fucking America and that's what makes it awesome. You don't like it? Make a better argument. So the, this video being commoditized thing, okay, it's, it's like when I go to the grocery store to buy a gallon of drinking water, it's commoditized. Like, am I gonna buy a gallon of Avion or Perrier? They don't sell bulk fizzy water like that. When you just want a gallon of drinking water at Walmart for like 99 cents, there it's, it's generic. There's like a couple different types you can buy, but it's basically all the same thing. It's generic. So that's what you need to understand. You need to understand that your content is the magic and where the content gets held doesn't really matter. It's a commodity. And if, if you're watching this video on the DropQuast website, this will make sense to you because you can see it right up here. But if you're on, well, if, if you're watching this on a video platform, like at the end of this video, there'll be a URL for my website. Go to my website in the menu, click on videos, and you'll see what I'm talking about. When you content creators put out your content, you don't depend on the actual video host for your people to go to to watch the videos. That's fucking insane. If I build up a YouTube account and it gets suspended, all the content's gone and all the people end up going to dead links. But the way that it works on my site, which you can have your webmaster easily duplicate this, you go to my website. I share the video link on my website. That's never gonna change and nobody can censor me there. It's my own website. But when you actually look at the video player window, the content, you'll notice that there are tabs for different video sources. So one source I have available on my website is Vimeo, at least until they suspend my account again or do it permanently. Another one is YouTube. Another one is BitChute. And that's about all that fit in the tabs for you know small screen when you tip it with your iPhone, right? So I've put three video sources there where when somebody like Vimeo the other day decides to turn my account off, if you happen to go to my website while my Vimeo account was suspended, you see that there's Vimeo not there, but there's YouTube and BitChute. 
So it doesn't matter. So people can still get to my content. And if somebody like, let's say uh, Vimeo permanently suspended my account, that's fine. I just pull out Vimeo out of my website. I still have two running and I'd add a new third. And by the way, for you video content hosting platforms that think like, oh, well, we can get together. You know, there's only a few of us and then fuck him. No, 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 no. Fuck you. I'm a software developer. I'm a senior full stack Ruby on Rails developer. I can build whatever the fuck I want. You can't de-platform me. For right now, somebody like Vimeo, you're my bitch. I pay you a few bucks a month to host my videos and I use you like a fucking electronic goddamn mule, okay? So you behave and you do what I pay you for or I stop paying you and I do it somewhere else. You can't de-platform me. Okay, so that kind of sums it up for the content creators. The idea is be sharing links to platforms you own so you can't be deplatformed. And when you share a link to a video, make sure that that video is available from different sources. Again, go to my website, click on the videos tab. You can see how I did it on my website. Okay, so then here's the last part. As I was saying, I am a senior full stack Ruby on Rails developer. I am not somebody that just knows how to write code. I own companies that are online businesses. So I have a little bit of a different perspective on this. I'm kind of in Silicon Valley, but I'm the black sheep, bastard child, libertarian kind of more computer geek, right? So I understand the game, I'm in the game. And for anyone out there that is, oh, well, you probably build like, you know, small stuff, so your opinion's not valid. Well, let me explain something to you. The Vimeo site, I could rebuild in a fucking weekend. I wouldn't have all the automatic systems in that disable the accounts of people I don't like, but that shouldn't be in there anyways. The actual functioning site and the billing and being able to host videos, I could do that in a fucking weekend. So I understand their system. I really understand their system because it's not that complicated. To give you a bit of a comparison, one of the tech companies that I own, which is running on 100% software I personally wrote, is a company that moves financial transaction data across the internet and synchronizes it with different analytics packages. What happens on Vimeo if their entire platform crashes? Eh, somebody doesn't see a video. You know what happens if I miss one transaction out of a hundred thousand that my system's processing? It's a big deal. Not quite as big of a deal like, you know, Elon Musk shooting rockets into space. I haven't quite gotten the, the level where my code can kill people if it doesn't work or self-driving cars, but, but I get it. So anyone listening to this on either end, whether you're a, a consumer of edgy content, a content provider, or you're one of these bastards sitting there with your company going, well, I'm just going to censor everyone I don't agree with. I got all the bases covered here. So please, I'm asking you guys, if you're someone that appreciates edgy content, even if you don't agree with it all the time, support the content creators. If it's somebody like Alex Jones, who you may not agree with, like I don't, at least support his right to be heard. And if it's somebody that you listen to a lot, like me, support me. Buy my books, buy my t-shirts, uh, get a consulting hour, you know, thing, things like that. Um, because we aren't getting, we aren't getting compensated anymore from these video platforms. Like no, nobody's making money off of advertising anymore. If you're a creator, realize you hold all the fucking marbles. The, these video hosting platforms are a goddamn commodity. Don't sell out. And if one of them misbehaves, you fucking bitch slap them. Get them in line. If it happens again, you fucking get rid of them. 
And if you're a content creator that's that's not so good with the tech stuff, like Jesus, call me, okay? Send me an email and I'll either help you or hook you up with someone that can get you straight. So we get away from these, these tech companies. And then again, these tech companies, I'm gonna tell you motherfuckers, you better fucking watch it because I am a tech company and my lawyers are better than yours.